All right, I'm going to review selection tools in Photoshop CC 2017. And if you're in my classroom, we have a giraffe bell ringers folder that you should have copied and pasted so that you can utilize that to work with me here. So we're going to look at a couple of different images and um, the properties that we see. So for instance, this giraffe 2. This is pretty much on a solid white background. Giraffe 3 is generally on a solid blue background, though there are some variations. And giraffe 4 has shadows, so this one's much more complicated. I'm going to deal with giraffe 2 first. So inside of Photoshop, I'm going to open up my giraffe 2 here. And we're going to utilize that one for this first one. So if you're playing along, let's go ahead and open up giraffe number 2. Now, in Photoshop, you can only use selection tools to select. Your selection tools are here. These are your marquee tools. And they're not used a lot because they're basically rectangles or circles. Then we have our lasso tools. The top lasso is the freehand lasso. And then these other two are a little more fancy. We'll talk about those in a bit. And then the last set of selection tools are the quick selection tool which is really awesome. It's a paintbrush that you paint over stuff to select it. And then the magic wand tool, and that's used for things that are basically all the same color. Um, so that would be the tool of choice probably for this one that we're going to mess with here. When you're using the magic wand, or any selection tool for that matter, up here at the top we have different buttons. Those buttons indicate starting a new selection, adding or subtracting from the selection. So uh, what I want you to note here for this first one is I'm not actually selecting the giraffe. I'm selecting the background because the background is easier to select than that giraffe would be. So I'm going to set my tolerance. Tolerance is the pickiness of the wand. So let me set it really low. Let's set it on three and click. All right, so notice that on three, it's so picky that it doesn't get everything. There's like a lot of haloed areas around the outside edges of the giraffe. So that's not a good one. Now to get rid of our marching ants that designate that we have a selection, we press Control D, that's to deselect, so we can start over. Now I could have just clicked again anyway because I'm already on the new selection, which means it would start over anyway. But I don't hardly ever work in that in that mode. All right, I'm going to up my tolerance to like 28, 30. That's kind of where I keep mine most of the time. I'm going to give it a click. This is a lot better. Um, for the most part, we have selected uh, around it. There are some issues in the little hair area of the um, giraffe. If I zoom up, and you can do this more easily with your navigator, you can see there's a lot of white areas that I got uh, that still I don't have because they're kind of like an off gray almost. So I'm going to press Control D again. I'm going to go back to my magic wand, and I'm going to up it a little bit more. I'm going to click again. All right. Now, again, we have to be careful because if we get too high, we're going to start getting into this nose in that area. We've also got this section here, this little triangle. We need to select that white part too. So to do that, I'm going to come to Add to Selection. So it adds this in. So I'm going to click in the middle and then it adds that one in there. Now here's the problem. If we go to use this right now and we get ready to drag it over to another document, it's going to drag the background not the giraffe. And I can kind of show you here. There's a, a feature called Select and Mask that we use a lot more later on. When you click Select and Mask, it's got this um, different views and everything. But if I have it on this current view, which is on black, uh, you can see that on a black background, he disappears, which means he's gone. Well, that's not what I want. I want to select I want to select him. I want the background to disappear. So I'm going to hit cancel and then we're going to right click and it doesn't matter what selection tool you're on as long as you're on one. You can right click and you're going to select the inverse. And you math people know the inverse is the opposite. So if I click select inverse now, notice it doesn't go around the outside edge. It goes around the little character. And so if I click select mess now, when I go to black, that background is black. But um, otherwise our giraffe is in good shape. Again, it's not perfect because um, those little bitty white edges we really can't get. And that's what this select and mask feature is really good for. There's a thing called edge detection. Yours is probably not opened, but you would open it. You can click on smart radius and you can up this. And as you do, it will generally start moving around these edges. And it's not going to help us much on this one. It looks like it's just getting fuzzier the more we do that one. So I'm going to turn that off here. The other option is that there is a uh, paintbrush, the second one that looks like it has hair on it, that's kind of made for hairy areas, for lack of a better word. I'm going to control plus plus to get in here and 
I'm going to hold down space bar to get my hand to scoot up. All right, now we're in here, and I have this little hairbrush going on, on plus, and um, 20 is fine. So you can see the size of my circle. That's that 20. If I come in here and I just sort of paint around the edges, then it's putting in all those little wisps of hair. Isn't that cool? Now, if it gets too far out, you can minus out some of the areas by taking a minus and just coming in from the outside edge. Oops, too far, so we'll go back to plus. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I'm going to hold down my space bar and scoot up to go to the tail. I'm going to do the same thing here. Again, you kind of want to run the plus sign right on the edge of where that white area is that we don't want. Here we go. All right. And again, if it doesn't look right, go to minus and come in from the outside. Just kind of come in from the outside. Now, if you get too far like I did, you know, go back and fix it. All right. I'm going to control and 1 to get this back here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. And then now we've got this selection. You can see this is all kinds of jagged here. So I'm going to create a new document here just to drag this guy into. Um, I'm just going to use... Um, a default Photoshop 5 by 7 or, or whatever size is fine. I'm going to fill in my background with a little pattern here just to give it some personality. All right, now I'm going to undock this one. I'm going to undock this guy, and I'm going to drag him over with the Move tool. And there we go. And he looks pretty good. Pretty good right there. Okay, I'm going to close this one out. I'm not going to save him because he's already pulled over and he's looking fine. Let's go ahead now and look at a different one. So I'm going to open this time. We're going to use the blue one. Um, and so we've got this giraffe. Let me dock this back up here so I can see the blue giraffe. All right, so we've got this one. Same situation here. We're going to take that magic wand tool and um, we'll try that tolerance of 40 again and give it a click. Um, it did pretty good. Now notice it didn't get this side. That's because it got cut off. There's a neck in the way and there's whatever that is. Is it an ear? No, I guess not. It's like a horn that's in the way. Um, and still, it doesn't seem to be getting quite as close as it could. I'm going to press Control D. I'm going to up my tolerance to about 60 and see if that's any better. I think that is better. And then I'm going to make sure this is on Add to Selection and I'm going to grab this side and get that in there. And then if there's any areas that we need to add in, let's go ahead and, and zoom up close and go back to that magic wand and click into those areas as well. Here we go. All right. So that's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to control minus a little bit here and go into select and mask. Now it's going to be set on whatever you had it set before. And again, right now it's turning my giraffe area black instead of my background black because I selected the background. So I need to select the opposite. So right click, select inverse. Now it's only selecting the animal, select a mask, and here we go. Now we can see it much better. Um, now notice that I am at 200%, so this is going to look a little blurry because I'm at 200% of actual size. Um, so if we press like control and 1, it puts us at 100%, and this gives us a better idea of what it really looks like. But I'm going to go ahead and plus up a little bit. I'm going to take that brush, the one with the hair on it, that's that refined edge brush. I'm going to take that and go ahead and get into this bottom part a little bit. I'm going to use a smaller brush. Your bracket to the left um, is the one that is smaller. I'm just going to kind of come around here, his little hairy mouth. Um, and again, if you don't like the way it looks, just go on minus and come in from the outside just a little bit get too close. Um, there we go. All right. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And then I should be ready to drag this one over. So I'm going to undock it. I'm going to undock my other one. Take my move tool. Point here to this. Click and drag over. And there he is. So we've got him in there and he's looking good. All right. So essentially that's the magic wand tool. Now I'm going to pop over to this other giraffe that I have open. And it's a really small picture. So this one's going to be a little bit extreme. Um, I'm going to use the magic wand again here, but I'm also going to introduce you to a thing called the quick mask. Now the quick mask is special. It doesn't actually use selection tools. It uses a paintbrush. So just remember that in your head. You can use it after you've used a different tool. So first I'm going to use my magic wand. I'm going to click out here and try to pick this up. I'm still set on 60 from before, and it looks okay. It's messed up pretty bad on these legs. Actually, I'm going to press Control D and go a little bit less. I'm going to go back to 42 or so. All right. You can see there's still some issues along these edges. That's fine. I'm going to leave it for now. I am going to go ahead and select Inverse so that we have the actual um, 
giraffe selected. But this time I'm going to press this little button here, or I can press Q. This is called quick mask mode. Now, if you click onto quick mask mode, what happens is you see a red overlay that shows you the areas that are not selected. So if something is not supposed to be selected, like I don't, I don't want this to be selected, then I can grab a paintbrush. Now when you're using your quick mask, you only can use paintbrushes. You use your brackets to make them bigger or smaller. And you can only use black or white. Black is kind of like erasing. Black gets it out of the selection. So I'm painting in black right now. I'm not seeing black paint because you're not going to see black. It's going to paint in that red overlay. So if I want those parts out, I'm going to paint those out easier around these edges. And you can use a small brush or you can zoom in really close. We're at the pixel level, so it is going to look really, really crazy when we get up here as close as we should. Okay, And then, of course, I can get these big parts in the middle pretty easily, but then switch to a smaller brush just to get in there closer to those uh, legs and so forth here. Okay, And then same thing here. We're going to get in here as close as we can kind of around those edges and, and I'm telling y'all get get in there close because you can do so much better if close now that I got the edges roughed out I'm going to just use a bigger brush here now if your brush is getting too I don't know if it's too fuzzy around the edges that's just because you have a soft brush so take your hardness and turn it up some but you don't want to have it like too hard because then it'll be choppy and pixely looking uh, but we definitely don't want any of these little pixels in here Okay, so I'm going to control minus a little bit here and look at it, see if there's any other areas I need to fix. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Um, I can get out a quick mask code very quickly. Just press your button or press Q, and I can see that this leg down here has an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and come back. Um, and then I can address that issue as well. So, oops, took it out. I'm going to hit this button to switch the black and white. So I have white on top, and I can paint back in. You basically just use this process back back and forth. Now you can do this this way, or you can do this from that refine edge, uh, or that select and mask button. So let me get out of this for a second. So now I'm back in here to where I have my selection. You can see my selection is not perfect. But let's do the same thing that I was just doing. Let's go into, though, let me click on a selection tool. doesn't matter which one. So I can get to select a mask. Now in select a mask, we can see all this stuff uh, a little bit differently. But... I can see this part sort of missing, but select and, and uh, mask also has a paintbrush. That's what this one is here. So same story, I can essentially paint in, and if you want to, you can switch this to overlay mode so you can see, but you can pull the opacity back so you can see better where those edges are. So now I've got that same paintbrush. This time I don't have to worry about black or white. I just plus or minus. So if I'm getting it out, I can just minus out of there. This is essentially the exact same thing as using a paintbrush, though. It's just there's no colors on this selected mask. So you don't have to worry about changing colors. But you can still use your little uh, brackets to make your brush bigger or smaller. Um, if you're adding something in, you know, you can just paint in. I guess that's just the color that that looks like there. It kind of looks like those were missing, but I think that's just part of it. Okay. All right. I think that looks pretty good. So at this point, we can go ahead and hit OK. Or actually, if we wanted to, we could take a better look at this. I'm going to control minus here so I can see it better. Um, but we could pull this opacity up so that it turns red. You can see how good of a selection I've got now. And again, I'm zoomed up really, really close. So if I hit OK, now I'm back out here to this mode. Control minus um, so I can see it. It looks pretty good. So now at this point, I'm ready to pull it over. So I'll pull it over here, take my move tool, drag this little teeny tiny guy in here, and voila. So... Recap, the only tools we really used here is this um, magic wand, and we've modified the tolerance. We've made sure to learn how to add or subtract from the selection and how to select the inverse if we needed to do the opposite of what we have selected. We also talked about the quick mask mode and how when you turn that on, you see pink. If you're in the quick mask mode from here, it'll say quick mask, and you use a paintbrush in either black or white. And these little baby squares here, we can flip it right there, and then we just paint in whichever color. If you get confused, it's really not a big deal. If you paint in the wrong color, well, just switch it, and then paint in the right color, right? And if we're not in the quick mask mode, we can go using any selection tool to select and mask, and we can see, like, the quick mask mode here in the view mode. It's called overlay, and we can work the same way, only we have this third button down, which is basically a brush tool. It's just that it uses plus or minus to paint in or out. All right, so there you go. 
take this knowledge and do awesome things.